This is Hannibal here from thehannibaltv.com, and today we have former WCW talent. She's appeared in Impact Wrestling, ECW, UWF, NWA, even WWE, none other than the first lady of professional wrestling, Missy Hyatt. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Very good. You've had a long day. Yeah, it's been a long day. I got up really early this morning to catch a flight. Yeah, anyone that wants to know all about Missy's career, I did do an interview with her a few years ago. You can search that up on this channel. Today we'll ask a lot of fan questions, but how have you been and what have you been up to lately? Uh, just doing living history. Um, uh, about a few weeks ago, we had a World War II event, which was really great. And then um, a couple months ago, I had a Civil War event, which was really great. But we don't do it during the summer in Florida because guys would fall out in wool uniforms. So next event's not until November. Do you get paid for that or is that kind of a hobby type of it's thing? It's a hobby. <laughs> But I'm putting together a, a um, TV show. It's going to be about living history and about different time periods um, from Revolutionary War to Vietnam War to um, Jane Austen Fair to Renaissance to everything else. And, you know, each episode is going to be a different time period. So it's just going to be a living history show. It's going to be teach history because they don't teach it in school. Do you know the station yet that that's going to air on? Oh, no, we don't. It, we're not even that far along in it. We're just we're, we've been putting together the sizzle reel, getting it ready. Someone on here says you're still gorgeous. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> One of your first uh, boyfriends, I guess, in the wrestling business was John Tatum. He's around this weekend. Yeah, he's, he? he's over there in the next door. He wanted to watch. I don't know why he's not. Want tell him to come over here. <laughs> <laughs> How is he doing these days? And do he's you guys doing good. Him? Yeah, he's doing really good. How did you guys meet, anyways? We met through a friend of mine, and um, we were over there at his apartment complex, and he came chilling up in this red convertible car that I don't even know how it even ran. It was such a piece of junk. And uh, I remember seeing him and he had that bleach blonde hair and he got out and he was just so cute. And I remember, oh my gosh, I'm in love. And that's how I met him. I met him a girlfriend of mine, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a wrestling fan before that? or? Yeah. Yeah, I sure was. I saw the Freebirds on TV when I was 17 and freaked out and knew I wanted to be in wrestling. How were the Freebirds in real life when you were working with them in They Texas? were awesome. They were so awesome. <laughs> I love Buddy Roberts. He was one of the nicest people in the whole wide world. Were they as crazy as the story say? I just heard Tom Pritchard say that he once saw Michael Hayes spit chewing tobacco on the wall, then lick it off the wall just for a dressing room reaction. Oh, uh, no, yeah, I'm sure that probably happened. I mean, Buddy tried to pee on me one time, so, you know, in, in the world-class locker room. I was in the dressing room. I was in the bathroom, and I had John, you know, watch the door, but Buddy had snuck in there, and he was up there, you know, how they have the – the stalls and he was up there hanging up there and um and i heard i felt somebody in there staring at me so i started like kicking off my boots like you know da 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 da, da you know and, and you know undressing really slowly and everything and then there's buddy up there and i was like what are you doing and he was getting ready to pee on and i come running out there half half naked running out of the dress running out of the bathroom half naked because Buddy was in there laughing. You see, and now that would be like a major news story in real media, too. But <laughs> you just took it as like a joke. <laughs> oh, it was funny as hell. 
You know, I have, I laugh about it now. It wasn't funny when it happened. I was more mortified, but you know, now that I think about it, but you know, it's supposed to be great if to get peed on by a free bird is supposed to be great. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I hear some people are into that. Uh, I actually yeah, I guess so. Some people are. I'm not into that, but <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm kinky, not that kinky. <laughs> yeah, you at one point you did a website type thing, but that didn't last very long. No, no, yeah, yeah. Me and Tammy did a website. It didn't last that long. About a year. What do you think about her latest issue? I feel so bad for her. She just doesn't learn. I feel so. I feel very sorry for. Her. Are you surprised, or could you see this coming? I mean, how many DUIs do you have to get before you realize you shouldn't get behind a car? You know, you don't even have a driver's license. You shouldn't even be driving. You know, I, I, I just, I think it's sad. It's really well, sad. Somebody to lost, her, it was lost their father, their grandfather, you know. Yeah, supposedly he was a really good guy, too, and he was 75, which you could still yeah. live past that. Well, yeah, my mom to live. My mom lived almost to 94. Yeah. So. Now, I asked you about the free birds. What about the Von Erichs? Uh, they were wonderful people. I mean, they gave me my start, so it was uh, Fritz and Carrie and Kevin gave me my start in wrestling, so I loved them. What was the world-class atmosphere like as far as party-wise? Because Texas is always wild. and Oh, my gosh. Well, this was back in the 80s, so Gina Hernandez had the best cocaine there was, and... Um, and me and John were talking about this <laughs> earlier. And what, I'm not going to say which match it was, but it was a match that we were at, and it was a pretty big match. And we were both, we were, we were high. At, we were so high. We were so high. We were like this in the rain going. You know, and, 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 it, and it was just like, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. I don't know what we were doing, what we were thinking we were doing, doing that before we'd go out there for a match, but we did. But that was the 80s. <laughs> don't do that anymore. Was that uh, managing or actually wrestling? Well, I think I was in a mixed tag or something that night. Okay. I'm not sure. What did you find the worst side effect was of cocaine in the days back then when you would do it? Nothing. It was great. It was good. It's not like nowadays cocaine. Nowadays cocaine has like a gas smell to it. A friend of mine put some out not that long ago. He was like, oh, here, try it. It's the best stuff. It just came off the boat. And I looked at it and I, like, and I was like, that's like gasoline. I'm not doing that stuff. That's that's ridiculous. It's supposed to be like pink or blue or something and, and flaky and and fish scaly looking. That looks like, I don't know what that, that looks like, I don't know what it looked like, but I wouldn't do it. So, yeah, right. and the bad stuff can also give you really bad depression afterwards. Can it? Yeah. Ugh. I don't remember back in the 80s. All I remember that it was fun. Now, you also knew Steve Austin throughout the years. What do you think about his big comeback this year? Oh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. He's awesome. Did you He's see the best. match? No, I didn't. Yeah, I remember hearing you on his podcast. It seems like he almost had a little flirtatious thing going with you on the podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. I love him. He's so, he's so sweet. He's so sweet. He loves my Gucci purse. He thinks it's the best gimmick in wrestling. So, <laughs> Do you think we've seen the last of him in the ring? No. Well, I hope. Well, he shit me in the ring because of his neck. You know, but I don't think we've seen the last of him. 
No, nah, because he had such great reactions and they need stars and they have all yeah. this money. They don't have stars. They need stars. Someone mentions that cocaine now has too much cut in it, I guess. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know what's in it. It smells like gasoline, though. Or drain cleaner or something. Something obnoxious smelling. Now, I don't know if you saw the interview I had with Dark Journey. It seems like she's not quite out of her party of years yet, but you uh, you definitely matured over the years. Oh, yeah. I've mellowed and matured way much over the years. Way, way mellowed. I used to be high strung. Yeah, yeah. and it's... As far as uh, Hawk, a lot of people wanted me to ask you more about Hawk, who you dated for a while. He unfortunately yeah. passed away young, but he was a wild guy, and he's now at Dark Side yeah. of the Ring. Put you out know a what he did to me when I went to visit him in um, Minnesota when we were dating? Um, he goes, I'll be back at 3 o'clock. It was like 2 o'clock. And he left. He didn't come back till 3 o'clock the next day. And I was like, and I was there all alone. You know, I was doing aerobics, watching TV. I was bored. I mean, I was so bored. And then he tried to convince me he'd only been gone an hour. I was like, no, dude, you've been gone a whole day. I even called Teresa Darso because me and her are friends. I was like, I was like, Mike left. I don't know where he went. I had no car. I had no nothing. I was just stuck in Minnesota. I don't know where he was. He was a wild man. The days before text messaging. Yeah, before cell phones. Could any of those guys from the 80s have lasted through their marriages? If all <laughs> no. God, no. Nobody could. Nobody <laughs> could last through anything through the 80s. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up lasting through the 80s. I don't know how I did it. Which of the deaths of people you worked with hit you the hardest? There's been so many that unfortunately. God, happened. so many. I mean, Mike hit me hard just because he was such a great guy. He was a wonderful guy. Um, Eddie, that hit me hard. Probably Eddie. Probably Eddie. What, what do you think would have gone on with Eddie had he not passed John? Do you think he would eventually have worked for WWE in some capacity? I don't know. I don't know. He, he you know, he was such a hothead. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he would have worked for somebody. Impact. I don't know. Somebody. I read that you worked for Impact. I don't watch it much. What exactly did you do for them? I just came out during a match. Um, God, I forget who I came out for. I was like this. It was supposed to be a mixed tag with Tommy Dreamer and um, um, Ellering, um, Rachel Ellering, again with this. I forget. I forget the guy's name, which I, I apologize. Um, anyway, and I was supposed to do a mixed tag match. And I didn't, I, you know, I tagged in and then like went in and went to the right, went to the left and then tagged back out, you know, because I'm not a wrestler. And um, then I ended up walking away and just leaving him in there to get beat. <laughs> There's a fan on here that says apparently the Sandman really wanted you when you were managing him in ECW do you recall that? And was there ever any other wrestlers that were like that? No. <laughs> no. How was the ECW experience for you? Oh, God. It, it was just so, the ECW arena was so filthy and dirty, and I hated being there. I didn't like being in the arena. It was the backstage, there was no chairs to sit on, they were all broken. I mean, it, it just wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't that great for me. 
There's been a few people that want to know your opinion on Miss Elizabeth and does she deserve to be in the WWE Hall of Fame in your opinion? Of course she does. Yeah. I mean, she's not in the Hall of Fame? No. They they felt that Charmel deserved to be in there before her, apparently. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, she's not in the Hall You're of Fame. You're bullshitting me. She is not, not in the Hall of Fame, no. You're not either, and you're another well, I know one. I'm not. Good. I'll never get in there. I'll wait. I have to wait until Vince dies before I get in there. Um, and probably not even after that. It's probably in his will. I'm going to see how it will never be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, no, I. Sh- okay. I'm sorry. But Elizabeth should be in there. I mean, she was the first lady of the WWE. Well, yeah, that's true. I don't know if your your Piper's Pit type segment was before or after she debuted. No, it was after. Way after. Okay. Because okay. I interviewed her and Randy. Oh, that's true. And those are up on your YouTube channel for anyone that wants to check yeah, those out. Yeah, they're horrible. <laughs> you want to get a laugh? You want to laugh? It's horrible. Bad TV. Well, it's more entertaining than what you'll see on Raw or SmackDown these days. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. There's a it's few people. At least the interviews are shorter. <laughs> yeah. Were those scripted at all, or did you just basically? Yes, they were. And it's very hard to, you know, I, you know, I ad-lib. I can't do scripts. And, and, and I tried it when I lived in New York to, to be an actress, and it's very hard to to speak someone else's words and make them sound your own. And, you know, I did a few things. I did final, I did a movie, Final Ritz, that I was the, you know, had speaking parts in and and some other stuff. But it's really, really hard. And Vince told me exactly what to do and go and say. And I asked him, I said, please let me just go out there and try it myself and let me do it myself and just be my Missy Hyatt character. No, 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 this is what I want you to do. And so I did what he wanted me to do, and it sucked. So. Was he the one that wrote, wrote it, or did they have one of the – oh, yeah, it was Vincent. It wasn't really written. He just told me what to say. Like, go out there and say this and do that and say this and do that. And I did, and it sucked. If he would have let me go out there and just be me, then – it would have gotten over a little bit better, I think, personally, in my opinion. Someone's wondering what you think about the rumor that Gino Hernandez was the son of Paul Bosch. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Were you in that dark side of the ring about him? You were very close. No, to I wasn't. I wasn't. And, you know, they were going to do a thing in, in world class before Gino died. They were going to switch me with Gino. They were going to get sunshine with John and me and me and Gino and do a program like that. But Gino died. What was the most fun you ever had with Gino out in the clubs? Oh, my gosh. Going out to the Red Room. It was like this club that you had to be in. He had to be like on the guest list or be a member or whatever. And he put my name on the list. And I remember meeting him there. And Chris and Tony were there and just drinking and having a good time. And just, he was the man. Gino was the man. Would you say he was more over with the ladies than the Von Erics? Oh, I think so. Really? Yeah. Except for Carrie. I mean, Carrie was a superstar. Carrie could walk into a room, and if you didn't know wrestling, you would think he was either a football player or an actor or something. Like, you knew he was a superstar. Just the way he walked, carried himself, and, and his look. You know. What was he like personally? Nicest guy in the world. Very sweet. Very down to earth. I guess you couldn't go out with them as much because you were usually a heel in that territory. Yeah, you could never go out with them. No. 
You couldn't be seen with them anywhere. The only time that me and Carrie saw each other when he was in WWE and I was living in Atlanta and we ran into each other and we went out drinking and I got, re and, I, and, I, and my purpose was to see if he had a foot or not, you know, cause, cause I, the rumor was he didn't have a foot. So I thought, well, I'm going to get him really, really drunk, take him back to my house and then see, you know, I got so drunk. And, and I feel really bad because that's the only time in my life I've ever dr drove home drunk like that. Like, I couldn't see nothing. I don't even know how I got home. But uh, we woke up the next day, and he he woke before me, so I never got to see if he had a foot or not. <laughs> yeah, well, we've I've actually been there a few times, too, where you completely forget what what your purpose was. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even remember seeing. Like my eyes were open, but I could not see. That's how drunk I was. I mean, I and I'm never I don't really drink alcohol. I hardly ever drink. And boy, I got snonkered. Someone well, wants well, to know about you being Buff Bagwell's neighbor. He's been going through yeah, problems. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that night that me and um um uh, that Carrie came over to my house. Buff was my neighbor. And so I was banging on Buff's door. Buff came to the door with a gun because he didn't know who was banging on his door at like three o'clock in the morning. And then when he saw it was Carrie Von Eric, he marked out and everything. And then so we go to bed and then and then Bagwell was like, hey, my brother wants to get into wrestling. I'm like, why don't you get into wrestling? You know? And so... I got him into wrestling. Oh, you're responsible for that. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm responsible for Buff Bagwell. Well, he, he was all right up until, I guess, towards the end of WCW. That's when he seemed to start to fall apart. Yeah, when he started hanging out with Lex and got a big head. I told him, keep his mouth shut. Just keep your mouth shut. He never listened to me. What do you think about all of his DUIs? I, I understand he's trying oh, to. Oh, yes. He's got a lot of DUIs. Yeah. Oh, some, really? Some of them apparently have to do. Yeah, I won't get into it, but I've read a few of the uh, arrest sheets and it's almost like a movie. Some oh, my God. Bless his heart. Yeah. Poor thing. I love him to death. I, 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 I can't say anything bad about him. Yeah, he doesn't like me very much, but I find him comical, so. Yeah, I think he's funny as hell. So, Buff, I find it funny that you're mad at me when you watch this. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Buff. <laughs> and as far as Lex Luger, since you uh, brought him up, what is your opinion of working with him and how uh, he I love Lex. Lex is one of the nicest guys in the world. He really is. He ne he hardly ever talked to me in WCW, but now that I see him at autograph signings and stuff, I see him and he's so sweet. And he and he would ask him, and, and you know, I was telling him before that I was living with my mom and stuff like that. And so every time I'd see him, he'd ask, hey, how's your mom doing? Hey, how are your mom's doing? And then I finally told him a couple of years ago, well, she passed away. And he's like, oh, I'm really sorry about that. You know, and he was really, really, really nice guy. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I would believe how he actually transformed until I actually interviewed him and saw how he was, and I thought it was pretty incredible. Yeah, he's really changed. To be that age in a wheelchair, living with your mother. He's and standing be happy. now. He's yeah. standing. Oh, is he? He's amazing. I, I saw him at the last uh, autograph thing and he was standing and I was like, do you want to sit down? And he was like, no, I want to stand up, you know? And I, I was just so proud of him. That's working so hard. hard. He was yeah. good friends. And I think he still is with Nikita Koloff. Did you have much interaction with him? No, not really. Eric wants to know if you have any memories of center stage in Atlanta and how many fans would that place hold? Oh my gosh, I don't know how many fans it would hold. Maybe a thousand? Maybe a thousand? Eight hundred? I'm not sure. But I, that's where I met Ted Turner, was at center stage. And it was in the afternoon. He was drunk and he wanted to wrestle me, he said. 
Ted's a perv, but um, Center Stage was fun. I had fun at Center Stage. Why was it just you were there all day for the tapings and people? Yeah, were it was fun. It was just fun being there, you know, doing TV tapings there. The crowd was hot. The crowd was fun. You know, you could go out there and do whatever you wanted, and the crowd would just get into it. What are your thoughts on Kevin Sullivan, who I'm sure you've worked with over the years? Oh, yeah. He's he's one of the smartest guys in wrestling. Bill wants to know what was the best backstage fight you ever saw, if any. Backstage fight? I never really saw any backstage fights. Now, I heard about the one between Dick Slater and Sting, but I wasn't there. But I heard about that one. Yeah, yeah. We, we've covered that one through a few people. Uh, sounds like it was pretty one-sided there. Yeah, it was one-sided. Brandon wants to know how it felt to be hit with the cane by Sandman. No, I didn't get hit by the cane by Sandman. I got hit by the cane by his wife. And she broke my elbow. Chipped my elbow. Really? Yeah. And that hurt. And I was pissed and I was going to kick somebody's ass, but they took me in an ambulance and they gave me a shot of something at the hospital. And then I loved everybody. Al wants to know if you still talk to Sunshine. No, I don't. I wish I did. I wish I knew where she was. Yeah, nobody seems to know what happened to her, really. I know. She doesn't want anything to do with wrestling. Hmm. Joe wants to know why you were blacklisted. He feels you were blacklisted. Really? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think I just got older. I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> A few people have asked if AEW asked you to do something. I assume you'd say yes. Of course. Hell, I work for Impact. I mean, and I, and I just worked for GCW for Joey Janela's Spring Break. Had a great time working with Chelsea Green and Matt Cardona. Someone's bringing up Larry Sabisco. You already cleared this up. You were never actually with Larry Sabisco. No, we went to the we went to the Six Flags over Georgia one time together. Yeah, yeah. that was about it. He might be going senile a bit in his old age. I think old. he's going senile in his old age. Brandon Lee remembers your segment with Stan Hansen. Any thoughts on that? Oh, my God. That was the funniest thing I think I ever did. And it was the best time. I love doing those backstage locker room interviews. That was, that was the best segments I think I ever did. Yeah, that was definitely a good one. I think it's still up on YouTube as well. Yeah, I did like three of them. So it was fun. That was fun stuff. He apparently didn't like the, the goofiness that WCW was making him do. Yeah, he didn't like it. They wanted to do something like him take me to a dance, take me to a, like, he was supposed to want a date with me or something. And then it'd take me to, like, a place that had, like, sawdust on the floor, like a country bar, and, and me whine the whole time and complain and. Dusty, Dusty had some really great ideas that we could have done, but I guess Stan didn't want to do it. Those vignettes in the 90s that you would see in WCW, some of them were actually pretty good. Yeah, they were. What do you think wrestling's missing nowadays? Obviously, they're making more money than ever in they're WWE. They're making so much money. But it but seems like missing, less people They're want. missing individuality. I think they're missing, WWE's missing individuality. What did you think about them hiring Dana Warrior as a writer for a while? I don't know if she still does that or not. but I don't even know who that is. The Ultimate Warrior's ex-wife. Oh, I didn't know that. Or Widow, I should say. Yeah, Widow. When he passed away, there was, I guess they kind of gave her that job as part of whatever deal that they had, but 
it, there was some controversy around it because a lot of people felt she wasn't qualified, but a lot of these writers don't have wrestling experience. They don't have any wrestling experience. A long story short wants to know if you have any stories about the Sandman. A lot of Sandman fans on here, I guess. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sandman, okay, when you go in the dressing room, you go, Sandman, where's your bag? And it, and his bag would be over there where all the beers were at. There'd be like, you know, 40 beers sitting around. And that's where you find Sandman, where the beers were at. I wrestled him last year, actually, and he doesn't drink beer anymore. He drinks. I know, water. I know. He's cleaned his act up. I saw him not that long ago, and he looked really good. And I was like, "Wow, you look really great." He lost some weight. He was looking good. He was tan. Yeah, and he has a successful side that. business. Huh. He has a successful business uh, in home renovation type stuff, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was doing that out in, in ECW. He was doing that out in Salt Lake City, I think. So. Someone's wondering your opinion on Jesse Ventura, who you would have worked with. In I w love Jesse. Jesse used to give me lines to say when I would do my interviews and stuff. And he would say, why don't you say this or why don't you say that? Cause he was so smart and he was so quick witted. So he would come up with stuff in the, in the production meetings when we were going over stuff. And then he would come and say to me, Hey, why don't you say this when you're third out of the locker room or, you know, do this when you do that. So Jesse's the best. I can't wait to see him tomorrow. Oh, that's right. He is appearing at this eighties wrestling con with you tomorrow. Yeah. Do you have any stories about him that people might be interested to know other than that? No, but I wrote in my book that if I didn't know he was going to become governor, I would have Monica Lewinsky did. <laughs> 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 Sorry to his wife, because I really like her. She's really nice. But <laughs> They've been together forever, too. My book, so I'm going to give him a book tomorrow when I see him. Was he one of the faithful guys? Yeah. One of the good guys. Him and Barry Darso is the only two faithful ones I know. Yeah, you mentioned your friends with Barry Darso's wife. I like Barry a lot. You have any yeah. stories you could share about him? Oh my gosh. Okay. So Barry was was one of the was Killer Khrushchev or something like that in, in the Carolinas. And he broke his knee and I had a girlfriend. And so first I set her up with iron and she didn't like iron because she was like, he doesn't have any hair. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I'll set you up with somebody else. So Johnny and I, you know, Johnny was friends with, with Barry. And um, so I was like, okay, I got another guy for you. She goes, does he have hair? And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, he's got hair, but he was bald, you know, cause he was one of the, one of the, one of the Russians. And so we left her car at the mall, took our car over there, dropped her off at his house. We all came in. He's sitting there with his leg up, you know, you know, with a cast on it and everything like that. And so we sat there for about five minutes. Da, da, da. Well, we're going to go. We'll see you later. And we just like left her there. Two weeks later, she moved in. A year later, they get married. They've been married ever since. And you've and stayed you. friends with her. Yeah. Wow. Someone's wanting to know what are your thoughts on Scott Hall's passing? Oh, it's sad. Anybody that dies too young is sad. It seems like that one hit everybody really hard for whatever reason. Yeah. Sheldon has a bit of a happier question. What do you like to eat? What do I like to eat? Oh my gosh. Anything. I like food. <laughs> All kinds of food. Italian's my favorite, I think. And steak. Yeah. 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 Steak's got to be up there for me too. <laughs> 
Richard wants to know uh, what are your feelings on there not being as many managers in wrestling anymore? I know. I think it sucks. There needs to be more managers. Managers add to it. And especially for a guy that can't do an interview, you know, give him a manager. Now, I believe since your last interview you had with me, you talked publicly about this. I remember reading it in the news. Someone's bringing up that you sued WCW. Oh, I did that a long, long, long time ago. Yeah, what was that all about? Something to do with the Nasty Boys? And no, it had nothing to do with the Nasty Boys. It was mainly because they didn't pay me at the end my money for my hotline and my calendar. And there was a boob picture put up of me when my boob popped out at one of the pay-per-views. And um, it was up in the photo studio at CNN Center. And I took it down. And then I told Bishop I wanted an apology. And I never got one. And then he fired me because him and Jason Hervey were best friends. And um, Jason was mad that I broke up with him. And so he got me fired. And then um, I sued him. I sued him for equal right. I sued him for equal pay. I was the lowest paid person at WCW. People that had less experience than me that were doing the same job um, announcing or managing or whatever um, got paid like $150,000 a more a year than I did. So, and I used to be told, you better be glad you're a woman. Be glad that you have a job because you're a woman. You don't have a, you don't have a family to feed. You don't have a wife and children to feed. So be glad with what we give you. I was told. Did you, did you have benefits and stuff? Because I understand most of those guys had benefits too. Never. So you were under like a wrestler's contract, even though no, you I was under an announcer's contract. Okay. Yeah, because I know Larry Zabisco 100% had benefits. When I didn't get benefits. Before. See, that's another thing. I didn't know that. I wish I would have known that. That would have been something else I could have sued about. And they also paid for his time off and stuff. So Yeah, yeah no, I never got any of that shit. Interesting. But I got money from him. Not a lot, but I got money from him. So I was happy. A few people have been asking about your time with Paul Heyman and WCW hosting the Power Hour. I remember that. That was fun stuff. He was so mean to me. He was so bad to me. And on the New York show, oh my God, he used to just talk shit about me on that. When I moved to New York City, I didn't know how bit I didn't know how many people would recognize me. And people recognized me left and right when I first moved to New York City, all because of Paul Lee. You know, being on the pick show. What do you think about him being still in the wrestling business today? With I think it's power? great. He's smart. He's smart as a whip, man. He is talented and smart as hell. Yeah. And do you think there's still as much politics in wrestling? Some fans don't seem to think there is, but I would suspect that there's just as much as ever. There's just as much as ever. Just as much as ever, and there's just as many clicks now as there were back then. Yeah, they're just more unlikely to actually fight now. They'll do it in other ways. Uh-huh. Do it in sneaky ways. Yeah, exactly. And have you out of there before you can do anything about exactly. it. Exactly, really. before you even know what hit you. Mike, who I know is a huge Nasty Boys fan, is asking if you have any stories about knobs and sags. Oh, yeah. I got a good one for you. Okay. They left me at a bar one time with the bill, which was like 200 and something dollars. So I had to pay it. Well, the next pay-per-view, I found out what rooms they were in. So I ordered everything on the breakfast menu to be ordered, delivered to their room at 6 o'clock in the morning. So they never said anything about it, but now they know it's me. They did that to them. That's hilarious. Yeah. 
Matthew wants to know who were some of the favorites that you managed. Obviously, I think Eddie Gilbert and John Tatum. Well, probably- John Tatum was my favorite, but um, John Tatum was my favorite. I like I like managing Sandman. He was fun. Um, I like managing the Pit Bulls. They were fun. Um, I like managing the Steiner brothers. They were fun. Um, but probably my favorite out of everybody was Johnny. One thing Bye. that bothers me about the uh, the son of Rick that they're pushing to the moon right now is that they're giving him a different last name, but I having know. Rick come out there. It's like they're acknowledging he's one of the Steiners, but we're just supposed to. So we're going to call him something else? Yeah. yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it at all either. I guess it... because they want to own the name. There's a fan on here tipping me $5 and asking if you could <laughs> shout out Professor Tillman. Okay. Hi, shout out to Professor Tillman. Someone wants to know who was the biggest coke addict in WCW, which you might not want to answer. Yeah, I decline not to answer that one. I what think was, I know who it was, but I'm not going to say. Was it a guy that you dated at one point? No, no, nobody that I dated. Nobody that I dated. Somebody that I love very deeply. Because oh, okay. they, they, they tried to do the test free before and then they got suspended. Were you close with Rick Rude at all? Not that close. I mean, we started together in world in world class together, you know, about the same time. So I wasn't that close with him, but he was always so very nice to me. Yeah, he was uh, a lot of people's favorites. Another one that passed away, sadly. I know. Someone wants to know which wrestler has changed for the better the most and the worst the most over the years, in your opinion. Oh, gosh. Change for the better. Lex Luger. Change for the better. Change for the worse. Let's see. I don't really know that many other wrestlers now. So, I, you know, and I only see them at autograph signings and stuff, so... I don't really see the bad side of them. I don't, you know, I only see the good side of them. I see them on the happy day that they're doing autograph signings. So I don't know any that are the worst. I'll answer for you, Sonny. Oh, yeah, okay. (laughs) Al wants to know your, uh, what was it like living with Jake Roberts? Oh, my God. Well... Poor Jake. Um, it was a trip. He was really young then, though. You know, we were both really young. I think he was only like 24 at the time, you know, because I was only like 20. So, you know, we were just kids uh, playing blackjack all night, partying. And of course, his brother is Sam Houston, who's a friend of mine. What are your thoughts on him? I love Sam. Sam's one of the nicest, sweetest guys in the world. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you on that. I'm so happy that he's married now and he's got a good woman and and he seemed happy. Yes, I'm actually interviewing him on Sunday, so I'll tell him oh, the way. Good. Well, send him my love. Someone's wondering if you think Nancy Benoit should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Did she work for them? No. Uh, I think Miss Elizabeth should. It's weird who, who they put in sometimes. Like Bruiser Brody had worked for the WWF, but they put him in like the legacy wing. Right. And Carlos Colon, they put in the main wing, but he only did like one appearance in the Royal Rumble once. So it's strange. right. Yeah. They don't make any sense. Or Abdullah the Butcher. My I think buddy. they're throwing darts at a wall or something. I don't know yeah. what they did. Someone I wants want to be in the Hall of Fame because Trump's in the Hall of Fame. That's the only reason why I want to be in it. 
So I take it you're a supporter of Donald Trump. Oh, yes. Very much so. I'm going to work on the Ron DeSantis campaign, campaign this year for governor of Florida. I'm a proud generation, first, first generation Floridian, proud first generation American. Very good. I hope to live in the U.S. full time one day so I can escape these winters. Yeah, I bet she did. My birth mom did. She was from Canada. so. <laughs> yeah, I need to find uh, an American woman to marry there. Bill wants to know. I'll get you your green card. How much you want to pay me? <laughs> Someone's asking uh, a fan confrontation story to change the subject for that. <laughs> Do you have a fan yeah. confrontation story? Well, a fan confrontation story? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, my God. At Texas Stadium, when I was managing John, I was standing there at ringside, and some lady came up from behind me with a purse and whacked me in the head. And I just fell to the ground and they were like looking for me, like, where'd Missy go? Where'd Missy go? And, and I, I remember like, I think it was Scott Casey or Sunshine. I, I don't remember who all were looking for me, but they were like looking for me. And I was like laying down on the ground out. I was my only fan conversation. And then I had one lady jump into the ring one time and pull me by the hair. But. You survived, thank God. I survived. What did you think about that fan that took down Seth Rollins last year? Oh, yeah, that was crazy. And then he went on the newspaper and said he was scared the next day and kind of made wrestlers look bad. I know, idiot. Someone wants to know how Sting was back in the day. Sting's a nice guy. Sting was a great guy. He let me paint his face one time in UWF. Did you do it properly or did you rib him? I know. I didn't rib him. I just didn't do it as good as he could do it. MW is asking, was it planned to have you thrown in the water in the Falls Count Anywhere match with Cactus? No, Jack? it wasn't. I didn't know I was going to fall in the water or get dumped in the water trough. I had no idea. And Abdul the Butcher picked me up and he goes, I'm really sorry about this, he said in my ear, and he just threw me in there. I had no clue I was getting thrown in there. They did it as a rib. Now, Van oh. Hammer, he was one of the uh, less talented wrestlers, but he had a contract forever. Do you think that was just because of his look? Yeah, probably because of his look. The last I heard about him, he had hit a kid driving while intoxicated a few years ago, sadly. Oh, my God. What's up with these people driving intoxicated? They, they need to get help. Yeah, they definitely do. Why do you think wrestlers go down that bad path? Do you think concussions have anything to do with it, or is it missing yeah, the I think it's just poor judgment. <laughs> poor judgment. Because we all make the poor choice of being in the professional wrestling business to begin yeah, with. Yeah, we make the idiots. poor choice of being in professional wrestling, and then you get out of it, and you don't know what to do with yourself, so you just drink. Someone's asking if there was a wrestler that you hated to work with. No, not really. I don't think there was anybody I hated to work with. Was there any that had particularly bad B.O.? Yes. Adrian Street. And Linda. Oh, I wrestled both. them one time in Alabama. I would have imagined with his gimmick that he'd have the perfume on and smell like roses. Yeah, not so much. And you know who else was a little sneaky was um, was um, uh, the missing link. Because he used to get that green stuff on Johnny's tights and on Johnny and we couldn't get it off. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. 
Someone was asking earlier why Johnny stopped wrestling. Do you know? Johnny Tatum? Yeah. I guess because he just got older. He opened up a pizza shop and just got older. Jordan wants to know who is the last wrestler you dated. Have sex with or dated? Well, let's say have sex with. <laughs> okay. Um, God, that was so long ago. Probably Kid Cash. Kid Cash, okay, yeah. I think he's around this weekend, isn't he? Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh, God, this is going to be like, the, the, this is going to be the, the this is going to be the missing Nick actually. Nick 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 God, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> nah, that's funny. Were the hockey players better overall to date than the wrestlers? Oh yeah, I'd imagine so. Oh yeah, hockey players are a lot more fun. And why is that? Because they like to drink. They're Canadians and they drink a lot of beer and they like to drink and party and have a good time. And I guess it's, it's what? Just less political and less stress. Yeah, than less stress. I mean, you know, less stress on them and and they and they and, you know, because it's based on real performance. You know, if you do good, you make good, you know, if if you're talented, you you get there. It's not based on who you know, who you blow, who you, whatever. Um, he, you know, hockey players were so much fun to play with, party with. Play with. Yeah. yeah. Have you yeah. dated basketball players as well? I imagine. Yeah. No, you're not into that. Only football players and hockey players and baseball players. A any actors other than Jason Hervey that we would know? Um, um, yeah. <laughs> Do you believe Ric Flair was with Halle Berry that like he said a few years ago and there was some con I think she denied it. No, he wasn't. I think he just said that to be something something. I think he's over his controversy now, but what are your thoughts on like they brought up something that was just basically allegations from 20 years ago? And it kind of apparently cost him his uh, his chance with AEW last fall when the Dark Side of the Ring documentary came out, and uh, they talked about the plane ride from hell, and apparently he may or may not have exposed you know, himself. Well, I don't think he denied exposing himself and doing the helicopter, I guess they called it. But right. one of the flight attendants accused him of of some sort of sexual harassment other than that. But it's like there was never any charges pressed. And oh, like, then that, that shouldn't have been anything. That shouldn't have been anything then. It's, it seems to be That's, blowing over I now. I bullshit on that then. And it was funny because in the in the same like report, when you read the report, Dustin Rhodes had had been inappropriate on that same flight, but for whatever reason, Dark Side of the Ring gave him a pass, and they only talked about him singing to Terry Runnels um, on the intercom, and, and completely blew over the the stuff with him and the stewardesses. So it was weird. Oh uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. How did you get along with Terry Reynolds? I get along with her fine. She was, uh, she dated Brian Pillman for a bit. Did you get along with him? Yeah, I love Brian Pillman. I was supposed to go, me and Brian and Steve Austin wanted to go to New York and be the Hollywood Blondes, but our, all of our contracts didn't come up at the same time. Yeah, that yeah. would have been perfect. That would have been great. I didn't want to manage the Nasty Boys. I wanted to manage the Hollywood Blondes, and I begged them to let me manage the Hollywood Blondes, and they said no. 
Someone was wondering if you had any issues with Jason Hervey being short when you dated him. Were you embarrassed at all that he was short? No, let me tell you, you're the same size when you're laying down. That's a very good point. Did you meet him through Eric Bischoff? Hell no. Eric Bischoff met Jason because of me. I met Jason through the PR guy at WCW because uh, one of the guys I know that went to Michael Hayes' wedding, um, Tommy Nast, knows Jason. And I was like, oh, Jason's really cute. And the next thing I know, two weeks later, Jason's in town and he's and and I was out skiing and I got a, I came home from skiing and there was a message on my machine from Jason saying, hey, I'm in town. You want to go out and have dinner? So I gave him a call and we went out to eat dinner and then we were together ever since we dated, you know, for a couple of years after that. But uh, yeah, Eric Bischoff met Jason because of me. I think they're still business partners today too. No, I don't think so. Not oh, anymore. No. It's yeah. ended. Interesting. Wendell wants to know if you have any new Jack stories from ECW. Uh, no, not from ECW. From anywhere else? Stories. He got, he yelled at me at the, um, at the, uh, roast for Terry Funk. And he went off on me and went crazy. But then sometimes he says nice things. He used to say nice things about me. And other times he'd say bad things about me. He never knew about New Jack, how he was feeling. So. The relationship with him and Terry Reynolds was a unique one. Very unique. Before he passed, both of them were actually, well, she told me to cut it out of the interview when I asked her about it, but he, he just politely said he wouldn't talk about it. So. All I know is my friend says every time he looks at her, he thinks like smells like New Jack. Oh God. That's what he said. Now, I don't say that, but he says that. <laughs> Where can the fans follow you if they want to search you up? On I know Twitter. You're on follow me on Twitter. Just at Missy Hyatt. Missy Hyatt at Twitter. John wants to know if you have any Ric Flair stories. Oh, gosh. So many. I just saw Ric Flair, as a matter of fact, about a month ago. And I told him I was very upset that I've known him since I was 17 years old and I haven't been one of his wives. And he laughed. Yeah. He thought that was funny. He thought that was quite funny. Let's hope he doesn't get married again. He seems to be out having fun again. Yeah. Let him have fun. Let him have some fun. I don't understand these people that give him heat for being out and having fun and still wanting to be involved in the wrestling business. He would not be happy in a retirement home. No, not at all. He's going to go out in a blaze of glory. Andrew says, and I know this is a bad thing to bring up, but a lot of people talk about it. The story of Rick Rude allegedly committing suicide because of a penis amputation type of thing. Did you ever hear about that? supposedly there's a story that he tried to use some injectable Viagra and it went wrong and something happened. And Jake, Jake knows about it. If you ever see him. Oh my uh, gosh, poor thing. Yeah. That would explain why someone might overdose. Yeah. Someone is asking about Tom Zink. Any memories of him? Uh, Tom Zink, oh, he was so funny. He's always like, I'm better looking than that guy. I'm a better worker than that guy. Tom Zink used to always think he was better than everybody else. Yeah, he was yeah, another he was. one. He was better looking him. than a lot of guys. Didn't What happened to him in WCW? He seemed I to have no idea. Because he was getting a push in WWE and disappeared and something similar happened in WCW. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I have no idea. Someone's I'm, asked, the click. I'm never in the click, so I never know what happens. A lot of Trump comments on here and people asking who you're voting for. 
Well, I sure as hell don't vote Democrat. Ken wants to know, did you see Ric Flair do his helicopter trick ever? Yeah, I never did. He's shown me his penis many a times. I've looked. You know, he's had to expose himself a few times. Do you think a lot of these (laughs) these wrestlers would have, like, lasted today with, like, cell phone videos and all this? Because as good as Ric Flair was, WWE wouldn't a corporate company they wouldn't want their champion doing that oh yeah we wouldn't have lasted any time <laughs> knowing us we would have been videotaping us doing drugs and doing all kinds of debauchery things oh yeah that stuff would have gotten out thank god i didn't have cell phones back then yeah <laughs> It, it wouldn't have helped many people. And, and social media has also broken up a lot of couples even today. So I'm oh, sure. Oh, yeah. That wouldn't have worked. That wouldn't have worked. Who was the worst for cheating on their wife that you noticed back then? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know who I would say was the worst. I know who's the worst. You. Thanks for not putting I Love Lucy on this time. It's it's you, <laughs> Hannibal. You're the worst, okay? Don't worry about who's good, who's bad, or cheating on their wife. That's not the kind of information you need. You heard the first lady of wrestling for the last hour, and you are done. What? <laughs>